and welcome to this session. Happy that so many are here. Um, <coughs> when I wrote the title of this session, I was a little bit ironic. I hope you understand that, because this is quite a promising title, isn't it? Um, but I would like actually to talk a little bit more about a deeper knowledge about youth and kids and how they use media. And to my help, I have invited Dr. Martin Berg. Please, welcome. <laughs> he is a doctor in sociology and currently working at an agency here in Malmö, good old. And I also invited Professor Thomas Johansson. And uh, I think he is the most uh, well-known youth researcher actually in Sweden. Uh, so we will try to discuss different aspects of how young people use media and what does it really mean, you know, to understand a little bit more. So this session will actually be first, we will present uh, shortly what we do and then it will be a conversation and I really would like to welcome questions from you, from the audience, to ask us and to uh, get the conversation going. So we will start with small presentations first and then we take the conversation. So I will start. Oh, there we are. I'm an anthropologist and I've been doing a lot of ethnographic research uh, the last 10 years, uh, looking at how humans interact with media technology in everyday life. Uh, and I've been studying everything from actually from TV or media producers and how they construct the viewers to how kids uh, interact with media in everyday lives. And I've been doing this for 10 years. And it's quite interesting because so many things have happened the last 10 years, you can imagine. Uh, <coughs> so, it has been an enormous change today how people use media technology to express and construct the cultural and social identity. Uh, and I think that media is actually today bodily extensions, exactly like Marshall McLuhan talked about in the 60s. So what does this mean? Uh, firstly, I think for young kids today, they are totally integrated into the media every day, all the time. Uh, meaning that they live in a state of now, where they... Uh, I think that was your paper, Martin. Uh, <coughs> where they, they have total access all the time to their friends, nearby and far away, and also to the information. Uh, it's some kind of compression of time and space, where every minute is filled with some kind of activity. It's something going on all the time. And if they don't have the connection to internet, they we can see that they actually have some kind of desperation over them. Because if they can't be connected, they have a feeling of loss of control and loss of time. Secondly, we see that a lot of young people today actually have uh, feel that they don't have enough time because they live in this kind of information overload, so it's so many things they want to do all the time. And they also have to upgrade their social identities, uh, and they have to know exactly what the friends are doing all the time. So the feeling of loss of time is actually something that is uh, a big change the last years. And what does this mean? It means that young people today uh, don't want to interact with things that is not meaningful for them. Every click, every move on the internet is actually a risk they take, because if they show something that is not meaningful for them, uh, then they lose precious time. Another thing that we can see is they need beacons. Even if, if you talk to young people, they say that, you know, uh, I know how to interact on, on the internet, I know where I can get good information. But when you spend a lot of time with young people, it's really obvious that they need this kind of beacons, and especially the human beacons, because they need some kind of guiding uh, in the overload and in the inf information overload that they have. It's interesting when you are together with young people to study how they actually interact with different kind of beacons. And uh, if you look today, you have this new kind of uh, gatekeepers, and that's the algorithmic ones. Um, YouTube and Facebook and Google will actually select 
Uh, they will curate how we interact on, on internet because it's a mechanic selection based on your, your, uh, the way you behave on the internet. And when you are together with the young people, I, I have seen last years that actually they get quite of, you can see irritation and boredom on this kind of mechanic selection. And I can't help, but I actually would like to compare that when I've done a lot of TV studies. Uh, I was doing a study for TV producers, uh, and they, when you, I was sitting together with these producers, they wanted to do content that people liked, you know. And when you are sitting together with TV viewers, they get quite irritated and bored with this kind of stupid entertainment that are, you know, shown on television. And you see exactly the same today, when you spend a lot of time with young people, that they get bored and irritated with this kind of mechanic selection that they are uh, presented. Uh, so it's interesting to see that, actually, the bubble that they live in uh, is becoming more and more defined. Uh, and that's because that they have this kind of selection. So they try to find different kind of human beacons that are more trustworthy. And that is a big issue, I think, in the future, that people want the you know, more human embedded kind of beacons, because that's more trustworthy than the mechanic ones. Also, if you look at technology, all technology is actually social in its manifestation. Uh, we use technology to be more uh, human. And as an anthropologist, I, I define media as a way to mediate human relations. That's what it's all about. And if you look at young people today, uh, they constantly mirror uh, their relationships and their identity in the social networks. And that is a continuous process that goes on all the time. It doesn't have to do anything with time and space. And it's also like that, that the identity is always there. You're always social on the internet, even if you're not there yourself. Because your identity on the net is just living on, you know. Uh, and I would just like to conclude my little part and say that I think that the most biggest challenge for people producing media in the future will actually be to satisfy the need that young people feel for. They have a need for this more authentic humanness in a world that's becoming more and more embedded in technology. And I think that will be the biggest challenge uh, for all you people producing media in the future. <laughs>